Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio with a little electronics project today for the DC-powered ON18 Bandit Canyon Railway. That's right, I said DC, good old direct current power. I actually prefer that for small projects like the Bandit Canyon Railway in ON18 where it's nothing more complicated than a simple loop. So today I want to build a custom throttle for the Bandit Canyon Railway, a compact unit that will actually function better than most of the commercial power packs available on the market. To achieve that, I'll be using this, a pulse width modulation regulator. Why this, you ask? Well, let me explain. Now here is a good old standard DC power pack. And this is a design that most of us are familiar with. It has three basic components to it. This one's all solid state. It's all built into this one little box here, so all you have to do is plug it into the wall. So inside of here, there's a transformer. That's component number one. And what the transformer does is it filters your house current, your 120, down to a usable DC current, uh, DC voltage of around, you know, around 16 volts or so, so it won't burn out our little DC motors. That's component number one. Component number two is a rheostat. This thing right here, which applies uh, measured voltage to the DC motors that we're trying to run. It goes from zero all the way up to uh, whatever the highest voltage it's rated at. And then the third component is usually a uh, polarity reversing switch, so we can switch the directions of our locomotive. And that's basically all there is to it, and that's what's inside of this little box. This one also has a nice on-off switch. Not all of them have that. Now this one has a fairly sleek design, but it's still, you know, the size of a book. It's, it's kind of big. It's a little cumbersome. It's, uh, you know, where do you put it? And what I'm proposing is to replace all of this with this. This is the whole thing right here. This setup also has three basic components. Uh, first of all, we have the transformer. You need one that uh, will convert your uh, 120 house current down to 16 volt DC output. Very important. And we have a polarity reverse switch. This unit came with a nice little rocker switch right here. Center off that way and that way. But this is the difference right here. Rather than a standard rheostat, this is a pulse width modulation, or PWM unit for short, a PWM regulator. In fact, I'm going to be calling it a PWM regulator for the rest of this video because pulse width modulation is a tongue twister. <laughs> it's hard to say over and over again. So PWM for short. And in a nutshell, what this does is it sends out little bursts of constant power, like that, uh, at a faster rate than the stall rate of our DC motors. A lot of uh, electric power tools, drills, etc., use uh, PWM regulators in them uh, because it, it provides a smooth power. And I apologize to any of you out there who are electronics whizzes. I am not one. I won't be showing you how to build one of these from scratch today. Uh, <laughs> that is outside the uh, my area of expertise and outside the purview of this channel. I'm sure there's probably videos on YouTube will show you how to actually you know build a circuit board and everything and, and create one of these from scratch. I picked this one up on eBay. You can pick these up on eBay or Amazon or whatever. This one was around. 10 bucks. That's right. This little thing right here, which is the heart and soul of the whole operation, was $10. Now, I've already played around with it uh, quite a bit. I've tested it out, and I can tell you that uh, it offers much smoother power than your standard rheostat. And I only have a layman's understanding of, of how this works, but, uh, and, and how it works is not really all that important to this video. Uh, it's more the fact that it does work is what's important. I am sure there are some electronic whizzes out there watching who can give you a much better explanation, probably a more accurate explanation than I just did. But suffice to say, for you and me, it works better. So we're going to use this as the guts of our new DC throttle. I should mention that uh, before DCC became such a big deal, 
digital command control. Um, there were a lot of uh, hobby power packs out on the market that came out with uh, what they call pulse technology to help your locomotives run better. And that's the same thing as this. Uh, MRC, Model Rectifier Corporation, I think was a leader in that. They had a few uh, power packs with, uh, with pulse technology in them. Um, but <laughs> they're frankly a lot more expensive than this. <laughs> and this one I can build to the custom shape and size that I want it to be. So let's get started on that little project. One thing about this uh, Bandit Canyon Railway project is I kind of don't want the controllers to show. I want it to be look, you know, I want it to all be solid scenery, not have a big old clunky controller sitting out there where everybody can see it. So I took some careful measurements of, of this unit and I cut these parts out of some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick MDF. And I've already painted it with a, a, a flat red primer. I'm trying something a little bit different on this one. I put masking tape over the surface of the MDF before I cut it so I could etch a mask uh, for some little simple graphics on the face of this. So when I pull this outer masking tape off, you should be able to see these. There you can see the masks left behind, laser cut on the surface of the MDF. And the idea is that when I get this whole thing assembled, I will paint it a darker shade and then take the masks off and then the red will th show through from underneath. And assemble it is exactly what we're going to do. And then the faceplate goes on just like this. Okay, now before I install the electronics, I'm going to paint the whole thing dark brown. Okay, it's dry enough I can take these masks off now. Not bad. Subtle. But it's there. Now that that's done, I want to give the box a clear satin finish so that it won't uh, show fingerprints. Okay, satin finish is dry. Now I need a way to mount this up underneath the, uh, the layout roadbed, the half-inch plywood roadbed. And I've got some uh, neodymium magnets, super strong magnets that I'm going to use. Now I've cut a little, a couple little circles in the top of this, and that's where these are going to reside. Just need to uh, glue them into place with a little bit of five-minute epoxy. Again, I want to do this before I get the electronic components in there, just to be on the safe side. I don't want to get any epoxy on those. I just need to let the epoxy set up. To give the magnets something to grab onto, I've got a couple of stainless steel washers and flathead screws, and these will be installed up underneath the uh, layout roadbed. I want this thing to sit level underneath the layout, and you can see these come up maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe less, above the surface. So I've got some of this black rubber gasket material. Just going to cut a couple of little pads for back here. To get my rocker switch to fit, I need to cut these little tabs off, but that's no big deal. A 
about ready to install the PWM unit, but in order to bring it up to the proper height, got some nylon bushings go down here beneath the screw holes. I don't have to glue them in place, but uh, it actually makes it a lot easier to install the whole thing if these are all where they need to be. As you can see, I've removed the knob. This gets a washer on the front. That goes up through there. And I've got a couple of pre-drilled holes here for my little sheet metal screws. And this gets a little nut on the front. Just want that hand tight. Now I can plug the switch back in. Tuck that wire in. I also went ahead and painted that chrome knob nice uh, matte black so it wouldn't be so shiny. And there's the completed unit ready to install. Not bad for a morning's work. <laughs> now I need to hook up the uh, DC transformer. You can see it's got uh, four terminals here. The right two are for the input from the uh, 16 volt DC transformer and the left two are output and those will go to your track. One thing I've observed is this PWM unit does seem to care what the input polarity is from your DC transformer. So if you hook it up and it doesn't work, just switch the leads. And that should fix it. I marked mine with a piece of tape so I would know which one was which. And back over here at the railroad, I can go ahead and hook up the feeders for the track. Now with those magnets, this should just click right into place. Just like that. Now the plan is to build rock work all around this, so the only part that will really be visible is this little faceplate right here. All right, we got it all plugged in and ready to go. Let's test it out. Let's see how that slow speed control is. I love when a plan comes together. I gotta tell you, this speed control is far superior to any other DC throttle I've used. I can use this rocker switch to turn it off or to change the polarity. So let's try reverse. Uh, number seven here is a pretty new locomotive and already a good runner. The real test will be to see how it does with a poorly performing locomotive like this uh, Porter right here, which honestly has been kind of a basket case. It has one of those old N scale Minitrix 060 drives, which are not known for their great reliability. Let's see how it does. <laughs> Not bad at all. Well, I am super impressed with the uh, performance of this basically $10 uh, PWM throttle. 
it far outperforms any of the DC power packs that I've used in the past. It's made every single ON18 locomotive that I have run better. Uh, it's not a panacea, it's not a cure-all. You still got to make sure that your track and your wheels are clean for good operations, but man, this is uh, leaps and bounds better than the performance I've had in the past. And with that in mind, I think I'll be building some more of these little throttles for the uh, ON18 lines over here on Calico Mountain and over on the Thunder Mesa layout as well. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you got something good out of this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and find out what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And of course, if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa like these nice folks did and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.